Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, welcome back to another episode of the Fresh Thoughts from the Hearts. There you go. We're talking about our fucking dreams today. People sit around their entire life with dreams and they don't ever fucking go after until they're fucking dead. That's definitely not going to be us. What are we supposed to be? Wait 60 minute. and miserable Did as fuck? Did you say they don't go after it until they're dead? How do they go after it after they're dead? Maybe that was their dream. Ah. They just fulfill it in the end. Maybe they got life. sucked off on their way out. Oh my god. Maybe that's all they ever wanted. <laughs> to die while getting a BJ? Yeah. Sounds like a pretty sweet way to go. Anyway, <laughs> you go your entire fucking lives without doing shit. Except for working, paying off shit you don't fucking need. Thinking about what to make for dinner every night. And deciding where you're going to go out to eat. That's your entire fucking life. Yeah, for some people. I'm not doing it. Mm-mm. But it's hard to push yourself to take the risks. My mind goes to, I want to leave my job, leave here, and drive down to America and go after a dream. That and wallpaper is going to drive me mental. It's fine. The bubbles are right behind you, and they just need to be pressed. Well, what is that after? Um, I like that idea, but my mind is too practical where I'm like, how do we have money to sustain that? Where like, right now I'm a little more thinking about the whole idea of like living in an RV. You work here during the summer. We go somewhere else during the winter. I yeah. can start with that. I am so nervous he's going to jump up and knock that whole tripod over. Chevy, come here. Come here. My mind goes to... That's so going to be the thing I say in a million podcasts. My mind goes to... <laughs> I just think that going after the goal is going to be so much more rewarding than the goal. Or so much more rewarding than what we're doing right now. Yeah. All we're doing right now is working. I have the... Fear. Well, we're not. We're still trying to go after a little we bit, are, but yes. not what you would be if it was full time and the only fucking way for you to make money. Yeah, I would just need the security of like some guaranteed money. No, that's the way you don't go after a dream. Yeah, I struggle with that. That's the part that like really stresses me out. Stop looking at the bubble. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> if you saved for the next fifteen years of your life. To go on a vacation that would blow your fucking mind. The best food, the best house, in the best environment, in the best possible scenario that you could think of. Would you not spend that time while you're there getting everything you possibly can out of it? Yeah. That's fucking life. Yeah. We're not coming back here. Unless we're Buddha. Maybe we come back, maybe we reincarnate. But I ain't taking that fucking risk. What if you come back as like a, like a snail? Well, then you're fucking slow as hell. Or like a fruit fly. I would, you're only here for like 14 days. But it feels like eternity. Imagine how slow that'd be. Oh my gosh. Anyway. If you, if, if you could go on a vacation to anywhere you possibly wanted to, you would go after getting as much out of that experience as you possibly can, yet we don't do that with life. Yeah. Okay, off of that, what's your dream vacation? What would you save up all that time and money for? You've never thought about it? No, I don't need, I don't need, it's complicated. I would stay in, in a fucking awesome city. I know that sounds ridiculous. But I'd stay in a beautiful fucking city in a penthouse and I would experience the city. I'd go to comedy shows and I'd go to festivals and I'd go to... I get I get so, so much more joy out of talking to someone that I didn't ever think I would be able to than sitting on a fucking beach. Yeah. But you have no idea of where that would be? The land of opportunity was LA for a long time and I thought I'd want to go there, but then COVID hit and went to a fucking shit show and my, my mind went to Austin, Texas, where everyone decided to go to, where the, I'm not saying that your dreams come out of anywhere, but at least 
at least if you put yourself into an environment around you, like let's just say your fucking dream is to be a Olympic swimmer. You're not going to fucking go somewhere that you're not going to go to the desert to start practicing. Okay. True. At least if I'm surrounded by a bunch of other like-minded people with unlimited amount of comedy. Um, Would oh, that um, be a vacation though? I don't know if I'd classify that as a vacation. If it's along the lines of like something you do all the time, like podcasting and talking to people about their stories, that's almost more of like a But that's work not work. Trip. I know it's not a work. I'm not like using the word work, but it's like, I don't know. I think about my dream vacation. I know exactly where it is. Where? Australia. Really? Yeah. That'd be something I would save up for and want to spend a good two, three weeks there sightseeing, talking to people, enjoying the area. Bro, you going alone. You don't want to go to Australia with They got you? some fucking tarantulas. And like in the outback. Bruh, I think they're everywhere. I know some people in they Australia. Rained, I'll go by myself. They rained spiders once. Is that actually true? I I think so. I could message Camry and find out. Raining. All I'm saying is I know someone who just took a trip to Australia to meet another business member and they went on a like work conference while they were there. And oh my goodness, this like resort they got to stay at for a weekend was like in the rainforest. And it was so beautiful. And I was just like, yep, I could spend some time there. Spider rain occurs commonly in South Australia where thousands to millions of spiders seem to fall out of the sky. Most of these spiders do not possess any threat to humans and they are not venomous. You know how big Australia is? Just avoid South Australia in spider rain season. Oh, is that spider webs? Yeah. Gross. Well, we're just not going to go during that time. Or stay out of that area. Pretty sure where the people I know are, it's, that's not happening. I'll fucking tell you what, I would be out of there. I would have to burn all, everything I own. Yeah, I'd constantly feel like there's spiders all over me. I don't do good with bugs. What if I get fist fucked by a kangaroo? <laughs> What's that movie? Maybe you'll meet that kangaroo. Jack? Sure. I don't know. Kangaroo so, Jack? It's some movie you used to like and I've never watched it and you flipped out about it. Kangaroo Jack's boxing kangaroo. Oh, there you go. Maybe you'll meet kangaroo Jack. All right, back to goals, kangaroo lady. I was on goals. It's one of my goals is to go to Australia someday. Yeah, I get that, but like... I guess that not everyone's goal is money. And, there, and I understand the million million of different things. There are different quotes or different sayings about money doesn't make happiness. But fuck me, does it? I feel like it's just the way you put your perspective on it. I don't know if I would say money equals happiness. I would say money <coughs> makes happiness easier. There's definitely people with a ton of money that absolutely hate their lives. Yeah, but it's different on what you make the cost of the money. If you lose family, friends, and relative or spouse for money, then obviously it's not going to be worth it. Yeah. There was, a, there was a saying, it was like, um, or a quote, it was, if I could give you $100 million right now, you died tomorrow, would you take it? No. If I could give you $100 million right now, but you're parents die tomorrow would you take it no if i give you a hundred million dollars right now and tomorrow you have zero friends and no one to talk to would you take it no that's where they say that like those things are worth more to you than a hundred million dollars yeah not me it's like what is that bye money? bye what does bitches? the money get you and what do you give up to get the money yeah i obviously wouldn't give up you can always make new friends let's be honest I'm not yeah. leaving them for a well. I don't know. I, I people would think about it. If it was a real scenario, you'd think about it. No yeah. one offers a hundred million dollars, and you don't, and you don't go, hmm, nah, nah. Love my friends. I love my friends. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, for me, like I just have such a small 
amount of friends, that's a bigger deal for me because there's only like a handful of them. Huh. If I had a ton of friends, it might be easier because like you're probably not as close if you have a bunch of friends. I have a very tight knit, small group that I really care about. So I know. But like, I don't know, to me having a goal of mine is oh my goodness, you needy dog. Lay down now. A goal of mine is to be successful enough in my personal business that I don't have to work another job. Jesus. <laughs> Lay down, Chevy. Come here. Lay down. Sit. Lay down. Lay down. I think throughout the years of loss and grief and bullshit and anger and everything that everyone fucking goes through, you start to have a different idea of what you think would make you happy. No one fucking knows. Yeah. Do I get happy doing podcasts? Yes. Do I get happy interviewing guests that I'm just like pumped that I got to interview? Yes. Do I think in my mind that it'd be fucking awesome? If my work let me leave for four months of the year and leave in the winter to travel in an RV that we live in in the summer here, where we where we pay off an asset instead of rent going to someone else, because I don't want a house. I don't know where the fuck I want to live or where I want to be. I'm not going to pay for a place that's going to sit here when I'm gone. Yeah, we're definitely not in the spot where we want to buy a house. I Dude. just, my mind right now is like $150,000 to $180,000 motorhome or gone for four months of the year you don't have to work you can go after your fucking dreams mm -hmm. and then for the four months while we're gone you work sometimes to cover some bills and i fucking bust my ass going after comedy and podcasting yeah in four months of doing this full time i'd have enough episodes to put off put for the rest of the fucking year that's true. I would need 26 episodes. Yeah. In four months. To me, I think I'm like happiest when I'm just going by my own schedule. I'm not following what anybody else needs me to be here at this time, needs me to do this at this time. I am just, I do all the tasks I want to do and I do them when I want to do them and I make my own schedule. That's a goal of mine. Be completely in control of my own time. Yeah. I mean, it'll take a lot of discipline to make sure you get the stuff done you have to. You don't have somebody keeping track of that for you, but... Life is just fucking wild. Like, my mind could spiral all fucking day just about... what we actually do as humans for the majority of our life. I know there's so many like Instagram and TikTok reels of it now of just like you live to work eight hours. A yeah, day, but then at the same time you sit there and you're and like, you know how many fucking people in the world would be happy to have your life of working the amount that you work? I know, it's very much like white privilege. Fucking huge. Yeah. It's hard not to, it's hard, I'm not going to fucking sit there and say, well, fucking this person doesn't have it, so like, I should feel bad about having it. Like, I was fucking born here, I was lucky enough to, and I'm not going to feel like shit for the rest of my life because someone else doesn't have this. I want to take advantage of the fuck having this and make it everything I possibly could have. Mm -hmm. And that's where, like, if we get to the point where we have all this money, I feel like I want part of that money to go to bettering other people's lives like I want to always be helping someone else's life in some way like I don't know I guess that's why I work in healthcare I'm always helping better somebody but even think about it this way if I die at my dad's age I'm over halfway done my life right now I don't want to think about that no I know it's hard to just think about it because it sounds um depressing obviously yeah but, like, my dad died at that age, my grandfather died at that age, my uncle died at that age. Like, I'm not saying that my cards dealt that way. They all lived a fucking much harder life than I do. Yeah. But at the same time is, that could be my day. That could be my age. That could be when I'm fucking gone. And I'm halfway done. Don't, should we not think about our life as if we're fucking old, like, 
we only have a quarter of it left at all times? No. Not in the, like, I just feel like you would live more in the moment. Be less worried about fucking, not bills and stuff. You, you decide to finance something, you decide to owe someone money, you fucking pay your goddamn bills. But <clears throat> not going away like... on a vacation with family because, you know, you got to save up, you got a pension, you got all these things. Like, I get wanting to retire, but I would rather for the rest of my life till the day I take my last breath, work for not, am I, am I tiring you? Making me young. Tired. Work for nine months out of the year and leave for four going after my dreams for the rest of my life then retire. Doesn't that make it stressful though if you think about like, oh my goodness, I'm halfway done my life? Like now you've put a timeline on things. I just feel like there in always has way. to be not a direct timeline. But there always has to be a thought in your head like, what if I don't fucking see tomorrow? Like every single day, if you thought it was your actual last day, like tomorrow, you're fucking done. I think the things that you would say to people, because you don't give a fuck at that point. When 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 we when we prioritize me, obviously, prioritize making a million fucking plans on weekends and going away with people to do stuff and helping people do stuff and 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 all that shit. You wouldn't fucking think about it. I don't give a shit who you are or how much you think you help other people. There's, you, there is a fucking feeling in you that it's for yourself. And everyone in this fucking world is only concerned about themselves. doesn't matter if it's your fucking family, your direct family, your friends, your boss. It doesn't fucking matter. They are worried about them. It's the only person you can worry about. is you and your spouse and your, like, if you're a parent, your kids to an extent, but at the same time, like your day-to-day -day thought and process is what's going to work for you. Yeah. But it needs to be that way. Yeah. If you set aside so much more time for other people's bullshit and help, like, trust me, I've helped out a million fucking people in my life, and but I love doing that. But that's where you see that. the difference. Those people who are so worried about other people are the ones who don't do the stuff they want to do. I just have, I'm starting to have that part now in my life where I'm like, I feel like I'm committing to too much other shit and then I get done the week and I feel like I've done fucking nothing. I feel like I've been unaccomplished and I've been busy as fuck. Yeah. I feel like we aren't necessarily truthfully there. I know we feel like it, but I feel like some of it is just, we could just be more disciplined. Like there's a night where we're like, oh, let's go out for dinner and hang out with so-and-so. And then we get home, we're like, oh fuck, we didn't get anything done. It's like, well, why did we say yes to the plans? Or why did we make the plans? We should have said, no, this is our night to get this task done and work on this goal that's gonna take us to this step. And if we don't do it, then how are we gonna get there? If you sit there and you think to yourself that you had something you wanna fucking do for the rest of your life and you can't go after it, you're wrong. I, I know I don't have kids, I don't have I mortgage, I don't have any of this bullshit, but you don't have to. Exactly. I hate that mentality that like people our age have to like justify or almost like apologize for ever saying stuff like we're so busy or yada yada and we don't have kids. You know how everybody says that? You're complaining about something, you're like, but I, I know we don't have kids, sorry, shouldn't complain about it. I hate that. And it always happens to the people who their kids don't fucking do anything yet. Bro, they don't fucking move. Like, I understand. Like, I, I don't understand, but I get, like, having a kid is a lot. Waking up, you're looking after another fucking human being. I'm just not apologizing anymore for not wanting that. Why am I apologizing for my life choice being that I don't want kids? Or don't know. Yeah. Depends on where, where I want to see myself in five years is a fucking, I would have kids. You think so? If I got to the success level that I want to be at in five years, I would have no issue having kids. It was the, it's the only thing that has always stopped me from wanting to have kids is the fact that I don't want to financially string myself or change the current life I have. Yeah. I spend money when I want to. We go on vacation whenever the fuck we want to. I go play golf whenever the fuck I want to. I just think to, if we're at the place we want to be in five years and you're as successful as you're dreaming to be and I'm as successful as I'm dreaming to be, I just don't see kids fitting into that lifestyle. Do you? 
I don't know. We're getting back to kids. That was the last podcast. I know. We always end up talking about kids because it's such a stupid thing for our age group. You get married and everybody's like, kids, 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 kids. I think that slowly throughout the years, I can't tell the difference between it's people are just too fucking lazy to want to actually work or if they actually have a dream of going after something that they were never supposed to. I think our generation, and I was trying to find a statistic on this to bring up so I could be very accurate in it and I couldn't find one, but I know they're out there. Like our generation doesn't pick a career and stay in it for 35, 40 years like our parents do. And I think it's partly that. Like we're not, if we're not entirely happy and it's not what our end goal is, we're not staying in it. What's the point? You're just settling. That's what stops me from picking up every fucking thing I own and leaving. Why does it stop you? If I didn't love my job, if I lost my job tomorrow, somehow trademark closed or they fucking hated me all of a sudden and I'm gone, we're gone. Oh yeah, we're screwed. We're we're leaving. I could easily get a job that makes what I make now in sales still. Oh, I know you could. But I'd rather fucking pick up all of our shit, blow our bank account open for a month in Texas while I try and get someone to sponsor me to move there. Yeah. And the only reason we're in that position that if like your job was gone, we would have a month to do that is because we've kind of already taken a half step. I left my job. I've totally switched what I was doing to start going after different goals and dreams. I always heard, because I listen to so many comedians and so many podcasts and all of them are the fucking same. They went after a dream everyone fucking laughed at until they fucking did something. Yeah. And even if they didn't, how many people in the back of their minds that are talking shit to the comedians that are in LA or in Austin that are, aren't making it, but are living there going after their fucking dream, how much are they still, like, like that fucking guy is going after it. Like, at least he's out there, he's fucking trying, and he's not miserable every day doing exactly what I'm doing with my fucking shithead kids. And that's the people you have to surround yourself with. Not the people that I could name a ton of them right now, even just thinking about my own circumstance, that think... I'm fucking crazy and going through a quarter life crisis for quitting my job, moving an hour away and flying by the seat of my pants, as somebody would say. I would rather surround myself with the community I get to work with in my other business that are like, good for you. You're pushing after it. You have to put the pressure on yourself to get there. Those are the people you need to surround yourself with, not the ones that are doubting you. Like-minded, like-minded in general. Exactly. Oh, there was a quote they literally just said in one of our meetings the other night. Now I can't remember it. But it was something about surrounding yourself with the type of people you want to be. Not the type of people who judge who you want to be. It's very true. It's, oh my goodness, yeah. We could go on for hours and hours and hours about that, but... If someone asked you point blank and you had to say it in like one or two sentences, what's your dream? Or your dream life? Changes a lot, I don't know. I have my moments where I think that I want to be I would love to be a full-time stand-up comic that's traveling, it's touring. Yeah. I think that my uh, my dream gets so big in my fucking head that I have a fear of even starting. See, that's where it's tricky because I would feel like if you were the child of a stand like professional stand-up comedian, you would never feel like that. But us growing up in small towns, with very average parents, with very average jobs and lives, it just seems so out of this world to ever even go after that. Right? Yeah. 
That's why I wish I lived closer to doing it. It feels a lot more to commit to driving an hour, doing a 10 minute set, driving an hour back and doing that every single Wednesday. Sounds like a fucking excuse too. Yeah. There's excuses in fucking everything that you do. No matter what it is. Getting up to get the remote, getting up to grab something to eat, helping a fucking neighbor do something, wanting, not wanting to go to work, wanting to bail on it, come up with excuses or reasons why you're not there, why you're not doing well at work, why you're not doing well in sports, why you're not doing something in your life is a fucking excuse. If you don't make the decisions, if you do nothing for the next 10 years, you're going to be a hell of a lot farther behind and a hell of a lot more fucking angry at yourself that you didn't go after what you were supposed to do. I have the biggest, my biggest fear of my life is being 50 years old or 40 years old and have not gone after it and thinking back to myself, I'm like, I have wasted 40 or, well, 25 years of my fucking life when I could be a professional at something right now. I think that's the stuff you have to think about. Like when you want to make an excuse each week to not drive an hour to go do an open mic, that's what you have to think about. In 25 years, when I'm 55, am I thinking back, why didn't I just drive an hour? Right? That has to be like your push to do it. It just feels like life's going by, by the year. It does. It goes by quick. I remember like, I'm always hearing adults say that. Life goes so fast. Your kids grow up so quick. We don't even have kids. And I feel like we've already almost been married for a year. Where the heck did that go? I don't know. I just know that we've talked about our dreams for years now. And I'm just ready to fucking... Is it is it risk is it risking your current life? Is it risking your life and your well being to go after your shit? Is it a fucking risk? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, like depends on what sense you think about it. Leaving a Is it a financial risk? Yeah. Is it an emotional risk? Not as much if you're excited about it. I just think that the risk of not having the money I make now and the house we're living in right now and the ability to do whatever the fuck we want, whatever we want financially and emotionally and freedom wise right now, is it a fucking huge risk or a risk at all to pick it all up, sell everything that doesn't fit into a fucking RV and every fucking weekend drive to a different town, stay in a new environment, try new fucking things, Put a fucking RV in Kitchener at a fucking campsite or, 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 or near Hamilton, stay with our friends in Dundas, do comedy every fucking night and then every September or November 1st or December 1st leaving for four fucking months to keep going after it. Is it a fucking risk? What's the risk of being less happy or being financially strung out? It's like a rewardable risk. It's a risk, but you're going to get reward out of it. Does that make sense? Ish. Like you have to weigh it. I just don't know what you're risking when you're spending every fucking minute going after the stuff you truly want to do. Where is the risk? If I make, these are just for example reasons. If I make $100,000 a year and I'm happy for 40% of the time, is that worth the same amount as making $35,000 a year doing stand-up and doing podcasting and working part-time here and there just to keep myself afloat and going after my dream and being happy 90% of the time? If you're happy 90% of the time, it's totally worth it. We're at that point in our lives where we just have a lot to figure out what we want to do with our next two I or want three a timeline on that. Well, we've kind of picked one, haven't we? Two to three years by the time we're 30, we want to be deciding if we are having kids or not. Not even that. I don't care about the kids. The kids are fucking ha like Tom Segura started doing stand-up comedy when he was 30. Mhm. Mm 
he became a professional. Well, he started making money by the time he was in his mid thirties, but, but he was not a known name across the world till he was almost 40. He didn't have kids until he was 40. I'm not having kids when I'm 40. And that's fine. I'm just saying for an example, like, I don't care about worrying about the rest of my life based on kids. If for some reason we both wake up one day or one year and we're like, I would love to have kids and we decide that's the way we're going to do it, we're going to fucking do it. Done. I think for as far as like a timeline, you have to put a timeline on like fully going for it. You can't put a timeline on being successful in it because no, no, it's no. not a predictable thing, right? I like mean a timeline said. on risking it all. Yeah. I think we get our ducks in a row over the next year, year and a half. Get ourselves set up for it and off we go. That's too long. That's... I'm going to go fucking mentally insane by then. No, you're not because you're going to podcast every week. You're going to be doing the small stuff from here that you can and pushing it to its limits of what you can do here. By the time you leave, you know there's nothing more you can do here. And we have to leave to go do more. Right? I just almost pictured it as like... If I get to a hundred thousand people follow me on Instagram, okay, and a hundred thousand people follow me on TikTok, is that the point where I realize if I've convinced a hundred thousand people to follow what I'm doing, podcast result or or um, listeners are at fifteen thousand or twenty thousand an episode. I just need to get, give myself a, if I reach this goal, we're fucking leaving. That's a big marker. What is? Like just having one thing that's like, once we hit this, we're out of here. I would love the idea of sitting here right now and saying, because as of April 2024, our one year lease is up and it's not, it goes to monthly, mm-hmm. not to yearly. Oh, I didn't know that. As soon as you've done a one year lease, the one year is the only thing, the only amount of time they can close you in on. Okay. They'll probably ask us to sign another one and we don't have to. Right. But even if we said December 1st, 2024, we decide, if I get approval from work, that we leave in an RV for the first time. We're gone for four months on the road to the States, traveling and doing stand-up and doing... If we said by the end of 2024, December 1st, we leave in an RV, would we both be able to grind for the next year and three quarters to fucking become debt-free? To fucking spend and make sure that we're doing three reels a week each and we're both targeting customers in our actual careers each and we're both we're doing two, a heart to heart or a fresh sauce on the heart podcast fucking weekly we live in the same house <laughs> is it that hard yeah no i promote heart to heart i start going to fucking malls again and handing out the flyers and pushing it to get bigger and doing stand-up comedy a bunch while we're here yeah there's a ton of stuff we could be doing should be should be, yeah. If we put that deadline on, we have to. So I guess stay tuned. <laughs> Find out if we do. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? You're just so cute and quirky, it's funny. I want to be more than I'm supposed to be. You already are. And if you have the time... And you have the willpower to just fucking stop trying to please everyone else and go after your fucking dreams, do it. Because mm-hmm. you're going to be fucking 60 one day or 50 or terminally ill or have dementia or Alzheimer's or something one day and you're going to be fucking... What are you going to think about what you did with your entire life? You need to find like a happy way to think about it. Oh my God, that's so depressing. You just can't sit Why there at the age of 75 and be like, be what dying. the fuck did you do? 
You don't have to be dying. Just think about being old and thinking back on your life. If I'm not going to success for comedy and podcasting and the things I want to do, I'm having kids. So we choose one or the other. Yeah, let's go after our dreams. Perfect. <laughs> See ya. Oh, oh. you sweet the high